Let's play a word association game. Toyota, reliability. Lexus, reliability. Honda, last forever. Ford, built Ford tough. Chevy, like a rock. BMW, broken down, leaks oil, catastrophic engine failure. If that's where your mind goes, then we're gonna cover a really important topic for you today. Welcome back to the shop. I'm Jason, and today we are going to install some preventative measures for under $150 on this X5. This X5 is the three liter N55 motor, and it has a fatal flaw, much like many of the N generation motors, six cylinders of this uh, series, even the S5558s, where your belt, if it wears and it breaks, your pulleys lock up or anything of that nature, it's going to get wrapped around the crank pulley, spun up into a basket, and sucked into the into or into the engine on the crank. And then these little tiny pieces are gonna get ingested by your bearings and kaboom. Usually you're gonna hear a little bit of noise and your engine is gonna ask to see what's outside and blow a hole out the side. Now, obviously that's the worst case scenario. You might lose a belt, it might fall off to the front and you just lose charging because there's no power steering pump on these cars, they're electric uh, steering. But in the worst case scenario, this $150 kit, if you have active drive or $135 kit in my case, could be what saves your car. So let's go ahead and get this thing apart. This is going to be a fairly simple job. There are only four bolts I forgot to order with this that I'm gonna reuse that I'm not supposed to, but we'll talk about that when we take them apart. Now, starting with the parts, this really is a simple kit. We start with a new drive belt we have a new tensioner with the BMW tool, uh, eighth inch rod or so, a new idler pulley, and a bolt for the tensioner. There's already a bolt in the idler pulley. Really simple setup. Now I got my parts from FCP Euro because of their lifetime guarantee. I have yet to use it because I've never owned a vehicle long enough to have something like this break a second time. This car has 90,000 miles on it. And from what I can tell, the belt has never been done. You'll see when we pull it out that it's got some scoring on it that is what led me to do this job now before it leaves us stranded or on the side of the road. I have a bunch more maintenance that I wanna do on this car for the 90 to 100,000 mile range. I've already gone through and I changed every single fluid in it when I bought it absent the coolant flush, which we just did uh, a couple weeks ago. Coming up in the future, we're gonna be doing coils, plugs, a valve cover, because the PCV system is built into the valve cover. I'm going to pull the intake manifold and I'm going to inspect the valves just to see if they do need to be cleaned at the same time. And because we'll have the valve cover off, we won't need the little special tool to block off those heater ports or the suction ports inside the valve cover. Much past that, this engine is going to be set and ready to go for probably another 100,000 miles of service, absent any other emergencies. Let's talk about the tools that we're gonna need for this job specifically, but we're gonna talk about it as we're pulling it apart. So I'm gonna get you moved over a little bit closer. So to start, obviously we need access to the belts. On the X5, it's gonna be easiest from the top. And what we're gonna need to do is get this intake snorkel, this transverse uh, stiffening piece here out, and our fan. Now the repair instructions say that these bolts are one-time use. They're a 10 millimeter, or not 10 millimeter, 10 newton meter, and then 90 degree torque. These are those bolts that I mentioned that I forgot to order. Now I already touched them with a magnet. They are steel, but they are, I'm guessing with the torque specification, a stretch yield. So I'm not gonna replace them because I don't have them. I looked them up and they're like three bucks a piece, not a big deal, but again, I don't have them. I do remember way back in my tech days, pulling these things off of older generation vehicles. and I can't remember ever replacing them then. So drop down in the comments if you have one of these things and you have replaced these bolts or not replaced them and have you had any issues? I figure worst case scenario, if one of these breaks in here, well, I'll have to get it out and then I'll replace them then. So this guy has these little clips at the front and the back. I'll have to get a little pry tool in there. See the clip right there. Come on, guy. There it is. 
and just twist her out of there. See this little coupling clips back into place. Now on our transverse support here, we can pop the Bowden cables out. Try to be careful with the little holders. Gently pop these cables out so they don't break. This plastic will obviously get brittle over time. And then you've got a harness that runs across here as well. Now we gotta get it past the AC line and this coolant line. There we go. Now we've got our AC lines here clipped to the fan. And we can unclip these guys either from the line holders or unclip the clips on the fan here. So what I'm doing is I am pulling the little clips off of the fan support, popping them back and twisting them like that. We're gonna unplug the fan, which is here on the left. And it just has two tabs, pinch them, pull up. Double check my flashlight. On this side over here, we have our charge pipe, which you're gonna wanna be careful with because these are notorious for cracking down here by the throttle body. The plastic gets brittle over time. That was another upgrade that I forgot to mention. I'm gonna put a VRSF charge pipe on here, not for performance, not for anything other than the fact that it's aluminum and it will be stronger than the factory charge pipe. I'm gonna hit that grommet with some lube to help get it to come apart. Push it down gentle. Now it's coming free. Okay. Hold it by the frame. Hold it by the frame. That sound was what we were looking for. Success. Okay. Slide it up. Now we have to move this forward like that. There's two. That's what that looks like. Little plastic retainers. Get that one, oh shucks. The end of that one came off. This side clipped back in. There we go. Hoo wee waka. Make sure that fan spins nicely. Here was that clip right here. See how that pushes and pulls so you can lock it into place. We're gonna set the fan on the floor so it can't fall over. That would be a bummer. As you can tell, my uh, OCD tendencies kicked in a little bit. I noticed just how dirty the front of the intercooler and AC condenser were. So I went ahead and I pulled this panel off. It's just two eight millimeter screws and decided to hit it with the vacuum. Now this isn't gonna do any damage and I'll show you what this looks like. And then I'm gonna go from this side and try to blow any of that debris back with an air gun and then vacuum that as well. Now that that's done, let me show you what it looks like in here. You can see down below, nice and clean. The condenser, there's still some bug guts and stuff in there, but I'm gonna live with that. Absent pulling out the radiator or pushing it forward here, we're not gonna get a whole lot cleaner than that. We could push it outside and run water through it, but it's got almost 100,000 miles on it. We're gonna leave it. We're gonna need a T60 Torx here to rotate our tensioner. And then I'm going to use a, this is a T20 Torx long drive as my lock to get it out and get the uh, 
tension off of here. There we go. We're gonna rotate until we get this guy to lock into place. And right there. See, that's out of the way. Make sure you pay attention to your belt routing. Now, we can pull our belt off of the idler down here, and then around the alternator, around the AC compressor, and ultimately the crank down there. Obviously, mileages will vary. Some very slight fraying of the fabric on the side. Ultimately, this isn't a, I wouldn't say a bad belt, but it was definitely time to change it. Our tensioner is an E12. Remember, both of these bolts are supposed to be replaced. Check out how I did that there. As you can see, I just used a Torx drive bit to lock it into place. One of the things to watch for if you're inspecting on your car is if you're looking at this tensioner and it's bouncing a whole bunch just at idle, the spring inside has started to get weak enough that it's not able to hold it under tension from the load of the drive system. So that's a really good time and a really inexpensive preventative item to go ahead and throw at your car. I don't like to throw parts at a vehicle that aren't necessary, but I don't want anybody who is driving this, myself, my wife, grandma, anybody that might drive it breaking down either. So this is a safe bet. Now to get the idler off, it's got this little cover on it. You're gonna to need to pop the cover off and then you'll have access to the Torx bolt. This one is a T50 right here. That's our idler. I'll pop that cover off, just like that. It's time to change this guy. It's a little bit of side to side play. Well, that was a lot of fun. Can't see myself on the screen. I can't tell if I'm even in picture. This guy did not want to come out. And being that it looks like it goes into an aluminum block, I was very hesitant to just wrench on it super hard. Let's see. Yep. Uh, it's not into the block. It's into like a compressor bracket but holy moly, so here's what I did. I put my heat gun on here and I heated it up. I tap, 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 tap to just break up any friction, hopefully that was in there without hitting my radiator. And then I just gently, gently wrenched on it until it made a snapping noise. And well, after a mild heart attack, then it turned. So be really careful with these guys going at steel bolts into this aluminum block, uh, aluminum, whether the block or accessory area, because man, did it not want to come out. And what's really interesting here is this bolt is like screwed into the pulley. Let me actually pull it out and I'll see if there are threads in the pulley housing here. I think that that may have been why it felt so stuck is there was friction of this pushing up against the compressor housing. This bolt is in fact threaded through here, which just compounds all the different tensions on this thing. Wow, that, that, that's, that's really interesting. I didn't want to believe the torque spec, but 60 newton meters, the bolt is 55 millimeters long. It's the M10 by 55 deflection pulley. So 60 it is. This is a captive bolt in the pulley, like we discussed when we took it apart. So the pulley's gonna rotate a little bit while we're tightening. A little bit of torque with that wrench. We're gonna move on to our torque wrench. I've got one of these gear wrench digital ones. 
does angle torque, does everything that you could want. And while you're torquing, you'll be able to see how close you're getting. All right, 60 it is. 60.7. Let's get our tensioner in there. That is 38 Newton meters. Quite a bit less for the same size bolt, it's an M10. So our tensioner is keyed. You can see on the back here, when you go to put it in there, you wanna make sure you get it in that groove in the block. The groove is down along the bottom there where it has to be keyed into place. All right, you're not gonna get to see it torqued. <laughs> not on the, not on the GoPro. It's in the way. Okay, torqued there. Don't forget to put your little pulley cover back on for your new pulley. Oh yeah, that thing spins nice. A fresh pulley is going to spin and then stop. It's not going to freewheel forever. The pulley being bent like this, we're gonna wrap it around the bottom of the crank, underneath the tensioner, around the alternator, and down around the idler pulley like this, around the AC compressor, around that way. It will be easier if you have it in the grooves, like that, and then you can try to give her a little spin like that, and that will make sure that you're caught in the groove of both the alternator, the crank, down here, and the bottom side of your AC compressor, then take that what is it, a T60. We're going to release the tension on our tensioner. So pull back and we can pull our special tool and slowly release the tension onto the belt. Like that. Ta-da! Now, while you're in there, double check one more time. I like to run my fingers across the pulley to make sure that it doesn't feel like the belt is sideways on anything here. And just take a hot second to get a good visual on it because you don't want to start it up and have that thing zip off or damage it. The most likely scenario is that you'd start it and it would line itself up. That's reality, but there's always that what if. Okay, now we're just gonna go back together in reverse order. Our fin have these two, or has these two little ears on the bottom. You wanna make sure you get those lined up. And then our ears on the side, remember the one on the right side, it folds and locks into place. The one on the left side is fixed. Okay, put this guy back in. Now the only thing I haven't done yet is reattach my boost tube, but I can see that we're lined up. I'm gonna slide it on to the throttle body. Again, being careful not to try to flex it too much. It clipped itself back into place automatically on this side. That's good. Clip, clip, rock locking tab. Put the PCV back on. All right, everybody's happy down here. We'll put our clip or our front cover on, our tube fired up. Sounds pretty good to me. Oh yeah. That tensioner's not moving at all compared to the way the old one was moving. It probably had three eighths to maybe half of an inch of wobble to it. All right, so you can see the tensioner right in the middle of the frame below the AC line there. See it right there? It's not wiggling at all. Verify with my eyes. 
that's the way it's supposed to look. So if your tensioner is bouncing like this, Wooka, 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 wooka. Be a really good time to take a look at replacing it. You can even see quite a bit of wear on the pulley itself here and some transfer of material either from the belt or I don't know, just debris in general. So I'm not going to sweat the fact that I replaced these. I'm really Again, I'm all about the maintenance, which we're gonna see quite a bit more of on this car. I'm on the hunt for a new car for me right now. The Super Duty, Bertha, my girl. She's going to a new home tomorrow. Hopefully, cross your fingers. It'll be after this video is released more than likely because I don't edit that fast. So I gotta find something. I have been looking at a bunch of different cars, but I think I wanna buy two cars instead of one. One more as a project vehicle for the shop and one so that I can drag my kids around and get stuff done. A lot of different ideas. I'm thinking something like a luxury overlander might be kind of fun. Let me know your thoughts. L leaning towards a Lexus. I don't know. What you can do to help me out in this decision is shoot me a comment down below. Like, subscribe, do all those things that everybody asks, myself included, in every video. And I will see you on the next one. Anybody else have a sparkling water addiction too? I don't drink, so this is as close to drinking as it gets for me.